Greetings and welcome to the United Insurance Holding Corp. third quarter 2021 earnings call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. A question and answer session will follow the formal presentation. If anyone should require operator assistance during this conference, please press star zero on your telephone keypad. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I will now turn the conference over to our host, Adam Pryor of the Equity Group. Thank you. You may begin. Well, thanks so much, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. You can find copies of UPC's earnings release today at www.upcinsurance.com in the Investor Relations section. In addition, the company has made an accompanying presentation available on its website. You're also welcome to contact our office at 212-836-9606, and we would be happy to send you a copy. In addition, UPC Insurance has made this broadcast available on its website as well. Before we get started, I'd like to add the, read the following statement on behalf of the company. Except with respect to historical information, statements made in this conference call constitute forward-looking statements within the meaning of the federal securities laws, including statements relating to trends and the company's operations and financial results, and the business and the company and the products of the company and its subsidiaries. Actual results from UPC may differ materially from those results anticipated in these forward-looking statements. As a result of risks and uncertainties, including those described from time to time in UPC's filings with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, UPC specifically disclaims any obligation to update or revise any forward-looking statements, whether as a result of new information, future developments, or otherwise. With that, I'd now like to turn the call over to Mr. Dan Peed, UPC's Chief Executive Officer. Please go ahead, Dan. Thanks, Adam. Hello, and thanks for joining us on our third quarter earnings call. I'm Dan P., Chairman and CEO of, of UPC Insurance. I'm planning to offer an overview and discussion of some of our activities, and then Brad Marks will provide more specific numbers, and then we'll take questions. The third quarter results are in line with expectations and reflect continued execution of our 2021 transition plan. This plan is to reduce our growth and net hurricane exposure through increased reinsurance, exposure management, and reduced catastrophe retention levels, knowing that this is going to drive an increased reinsurance spend. In 3Q, we see the increase in net seeded earned premium, which impacts our core earnings, ex-hurricane, down about $6 million year over year. But we also see significantly reduced hurricane retention with approximately $30 million this year versus $125 million in 2020. As we go forward, we can capture the increased reinsurance spend in our rate filings which will continue to earn through the portfolio in 2022 and 2023. On the gross exposure reduction, our TIV in continuing personal lines is down year to date by 13.4%. We expect about another 5% in Q4 for an annual reduction near 20%. We expect to continue exposure reduction through at least September 30th of next year, 2022, and anticipate at least a 10% decline in TAV for personal lines next year. On the front end, we continue to drive compounding rate increases in nearly all states with a third quarter record average of a 13.8% across the entire personal lines renewal business portfolio. Over the last four quarters, we have increased premiums on like for like renewal business of approximately 100 million with a record 31.7 million in 3Q. Rate increases are expected to continue compounding in the low to mid double digit range through at least the end of 2022. Despite these rate increases, our renewal retention, excluding the non-renewed accounts, remains over 89%. Commercial lines continue to perform well with premium year to date up nearly 19% with, while PML exposure is down. In American Coastal, we have a market leader in Florida commercial residential with a dozen years of expertise underwriting that portfolio. American Coastal is positioned extremely well to grow profitably in one of the hardest Florida markets since 2006. Our plan is to continue moving the book towards a 50-50 balance between commercial and personal lines over the next three years. And for 2022, we plan to maintain our exposure levels in commercial lines approximately flat um, then we anticipate an average 15 to 20 percent rate increase and therefore a 15 to 20 percent premium increase. Profitable, profitable underwriting doesn't just include rate increases and exposure management. It also includes risk selection. 
We have implemented many underwriting changes, including the development of Mosaic, a, technology, a technologically advanced risk measurement algorithm that will be applied to new and renewal business to identify lost drivers. We are supplementing these types of underwriting tools with increasing physical inspections and underwriting actions for unacceptable or increased risk levels. Differentiating between risk levels can drive a significant decrease in combined ratios as a key component of our long-term formula for success as we drive toward becoming a top quartile underwriting company. Brad's going to comment on Florida Senate Bill 76, which was effective July 1st of 21, but I'll offer that at least initially, we've seen a drop from a peak in June of 840 lawsuits to approximately 400 per month in September and October. While it remains too early to quantify the impact on reserves and rates, it does appear to have at least stopped the runaway escalation. The pre-suit notification provisions enable a settlement in many cases and should be good for both insurers and insureds. There is significant cost savings in the reduced reduction of litigated claims as statistics suggest in Florida, 91% of payments made in litigated claims were made to plaintiff and defense attorneys. The current insurance market continues to be as firm as it has in years, and the Florida market is expected to remain hard for an extended period of time, especially for personal lines and commercial residential. For UPC, we continue working through our 2021 transition year, again with third quarter results in line with expectations. We expect to return to profitability in the fourth quarter of this year and continue to move towards a strong underwriting profit in 2022 and achieving targeted ROEs in 2023. With that, I'll turn it over to Brad Martz. Thank you, Dan, and hello. This is Brad Martz, President and CFO of UPC Insurance. First, uh, happy Veterans Day to all our American heroes. We thank you for your service. I'm pleased to review UPC's financial results, but encourage everyone to review our press release, investor presentation, and Form 10-Q for more information regarding the company's performance. For the quarter ended September 30th, 2021, UIHC reported a gap net loss of $14.3 million or 33 cents a share compared to a loss of $74.1 million or $1.73 per share last year. On page five of our investor presentation, you'll see a reconciliation of our core loss of $15.5 million or 36 cents a share to our underlying core earnings which excludes catastrophe losses and prior year reserve development, which declined roughly $6 million or 14 cents a share year over year. The decline in core earnings, as Dan mentioned, was primarily driven by higher reinsurance costs associated with our stated objective of reducing leverage and protecting capital. I'm proud of the hard work and good progress our team is making on taking care of policyholders in the wake of new catastrophe losses this quarter. And I believe our third quarter showed several positive signs that UIHC is moving in the right direction. Gross premiums written for the quarter declined 43.3 million or approximately 12% due to continued intentional exposure reduction throughout our personal lines portfolio. We are reducing risk exposure at a faster pace than the reduction of our top line, which is a good thing. And gross premiums earned were basically flat year over year at 353 million for the current quarter. Seated earned premiums were $200 million, a decrease of $34.9 million or 21% year-over-year due primarily to more business being seated via quota share reinsurance programs, whereby those sessions are partially offset by seated losses and seating commission income earned. Other items included in total revenue during the third quarter were $3.7 million of fee income which declined slightly due to fewer personal lines policies in force. Investment income of 3.5 million, which declines about two and a half million due to lower yields and dividend income from a smaller common stock portfolio. Investment gains of 5.5 million were down from approximately 25 million last year. And unrealized losses from equities uh, were 3.3 million versus 11.5 million a year ago. UPC's third quarter net loss and loss adjustment expense was $102.8 million, 
a decrease of 115.9 million or 53% year over year. Hurricane Ida was the most significant loss event in the quarter, representing 18 million of the 37 million in net catastrophe losses incurred. CAT added over 24 points to our net loss and combined ratios, which we obviously expect during hurricane season as a catastrophe focused property underwriter. Our underlying loss in LAE was 63.8 million, down 19 million or 23% year over year. This produced an underlying net loss ratio of 41.6%, which was down over two points from 43.9% in the third quarter last year. The improvement can be attributed mainly to the good performance of our commercial property business. Page six of our investor presentation breaks down our results for the current quarter and year. Here you will see a stark contrast between our personal lines and our commercial lines businesses that we're working hard to correct. Page seven of our investor presentation summarizes the five key underwriting improvement initiatives that the company has been working diligently on over the past year to improve our personal lines results. results. We firmly believe that getting more rates, being more selective, shedding unprofitable risks, cutting policy acquisition costs, and being more disciplined with agency management is moving the company toward restoring underwriting profitability. Pages 8 through 11 of our investor presentation provide some evidence that our underwriting actions are having the intended result on our risk portfolio and should lead to better results over time. Page 12 of our investor presentation provides some more insight on our litigation experience in Florida during the current period. As you will see, since peaking in June, new lawsuits have declined significantly, which is partially offset by an increase in claims following the new pre-suit notice requirements of Senate Bill 76. It's still too early to say whether or not Senate Bill 76 will have a positive impact on our loss costs or our loss reserves, but the early indications of successful dispute resolution are encouraging. UPC's operating expenses were 76.3 million, a decrease of 16.1 million or 17% year over year. This decline was driven mainly by higher seating commission income in the current quarter which is reflected in lower acquisition costs. However, our net expense ratio increased approximately eight tenths of a percent to 49.8% inclusive of seated premiums. On the balance sheet, UPC's assets total 3.3 billion, including cash and investments of 1 billion, 160 million. The modified duration of our fixed income holdings decreased to 3.9 years with an average overall composite rating of A plus at September 30th. Reinsurance recoverable and loss reserves increased primarily as a result of our estimated ultimate direct and seated losses for Hurricane Ida. Gap equity attributable to UIHC stockholders declined approximately 19% from year end to 320.4 million with a book value per share of $7.42 and tangible book value per share of $5.28. Unrestricted liquidity at the holding company was approximately $36 million at quarter end. That concludes our prepared remarks, and we're now happy to take any questions. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we will conduct our question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. A confirmation tone will indicate that your line is in a question queue. You may press the star key followed by the number 2 if you would like to remove your question from the queue. For participants using speaker equipment, it may be necessary to pick up your handset before pressing the star key. Our first question comes from Greg Peters with Raymond James. Please see your question. Uh, hey, good afternoon. Um, I would like to focus first on uh, your comments, Dan, that your ultimate objective is to get to, I think you said a 50-50 mix of personal lines and commercial lines. Is that is that, is that right? And did you put a time period on when you might get there? You... Yes, um, that's that's been um, our plan for this year. And we've, we've said three years, uh, approximately three years, and we are moving in that right direction. Yeah. 
with their retention, it seems like, I mean, even though you, you, you sort of um, limited in how much you can non-renew, um, and it seems like your retention ratios are holding up pretty well despite the rate action. You, you know, yeah. I think you list, listed Interborough, the potential sale of that. Are there other operations you're looking at, you know, or states that you're considering um, more aggressive actions in? Um, our exposure management uh, plan uh, has several different levers that we can uh, that we can uh, use um, in in the various different states, and each state is somewhat different. Um, as you know, also we sold the renewal right to the four northeast states um, uh, with a with a quota share treaty behind that yeah. on December 31st of last year. So that's reduced our exposure significantly. On the commercial side, um, you can do a lot more stuff with uh, deductibles and the specific uh, buildings and distance to the coast and those type of exposure management. Um, so we're we're considering all of those and and um, and uh, also for our planning for next year. Like I said, we plan to be down by at least 10% more by September 30th of uh, of next year. And when I think of, I, I noticed you said that, and you said also, I think in one of the slides, you expect to return to profitability next year. I guess, you know, when I think about, you've, you've done a great job with exposure management, and, you know, you've, your reinsurance has protected you from these big name storms, but um, in the first and second quarter of this year, and then certainly last year, you've been affected by these, you know, the proverbial kitty cat storms. How should we think about that for the first half of next year? Maybe, maybe that's more uh, wrapped up into a discussion of how your reinsurance renewal is coming. Yeah, so we do have exposure in the first and second quarter to the to what we call AOS cat uh, or Quiddy cat. Um, that tended to be more so uh, in the Northeast, which is one of the reasons that. Um, that we have exited most of, of the Northeast, uh, except for uh, Interboro in New York. Um, we we actually, in URI this year, we had a loss, but we were protected pretty well by our AOP CAT tower. Um, we are planning at the moment to uh, renew that, that tower, uh, although we may have to Change things around a little bit down in the in the bottom layers because, as you've said, that's been hit uh, several times. Um, it, it's really too early to say how that uh, reinsurance renewal is going. We're we're working on it. Yeah, I'm I figured as much. Um, I guess just the last question is, you know, um, you know, we're we're watching just from a big picture perspective the, the you know the the slow moving train wreck that's happening in the auto auto insurance space too because of inflation reduced or you know increased frequency severity and you know some of the companies some of the specialty companies in that market have you know really laid down the gauntlet like we're not going to write new business until we get our pricing right and i guess you know when i think about you know uh, at least on you're doing fine on the commercial side but on the personal line side it feels like, you know, there should be, you know, and I'm sure you guys have looked at it, you know, why, why can't you just stop writing new business altogether or, it, you know, you've cut your commission rates. How can you affect the inflow of new business more dramatically, um, you know, for, so, for the near term until the profitability yeah. is reset? Good, uh, good question. Um, and uh, I think we have – our, our new business flow is down to uh, about 5% of what it was uh, a year ago, a year and a half ago. So we've effectively almost shut off new business. The, the accounts that do um, make it through are generally very, very nice accounts. Um, just, you know, uh, everything you would think, uh, new roofs and good valuation and good rate. Um, and so we have almost we have almost stopped on new business in uh, 
in most of the in the cat areas and we have stopped on new business in in some specific exposure zones that we don't like such as inland risks and stuff like that um, so we are we are very aware of that and and almost all of our premium is coming out of our renewal business and our increased rates on our renewal business got it well um the commercial business certainly had a great quarter and year, um, and hopefully that will uh, continue as we look to 22 and 23. Yeah, the commercial business is, as you know, I've been involved with that for um, a dozen years, uh, and it is especially um, attractive in a firming and the hard market, and obviously we are coming into, um, I mean, we are in a, a you know, quite firm market, I believe, one of the hardest markets we're going to see in Florida since uh, 2006. So we expect that to go uh, well through 22 and 23. Yeah, makes sense. Thanks for the answers. Yep, thank you. Thank you. And once again, to ask a question, press star 1 on your telephone keypad. To remove yourself from the queue, press star 2. Our next question comes from Bill Vizellum with Teton Capital. Please state your question. Thank you. I have uh, two questions. Uh, first of all, what led to the uh, modest, uh, unfavorable 1.9 million pre-tax or prior year reserve uh, adjustment? Hi, Bill. This is Brad. Uh, there were uh, a few older um, catastrophe events um, that we saw some strange development on, so we decided to do a little bit of strengthening, but, um, you know, it, it, it was um, not systemic throughout the portfolio, just a, just a, a few events, and, and remember, we're getting dozens and dozens of these non-hurricane events on top of hurricanes, but um, all reserves for the name windstorms last year uh, um, uh, still look good. In fact, we, we had some redundancy there. Um, but that redundancy benefited the reinsurers. So the, these are smaller events that were within our retention. Great. Thank you, Brad. And then, uh, Dan, I think you mentioned that you're in process of renewing uh, the reinsurance agreement. Would you talk to kind of your objective of, of the total cat loss uh, exposure this uh, season versus what you are uh, wanting to accomplish for next season? Sure. So we're we're kind of in a continual state of renewing our reinsurance treaties. But so our AOP CAT treaty um, comes up uh, January 1st, and um, we also renew part of our quota share as well as part of our CAT excess. Um, but so from a general perspective, our view is to have a uh, I'll start with CAT, which is Hurricane CAT, which is the easiest to describe um, at the moment, and that's a, mainly a June 1 uh, treaty renewal, so we aren't fully into that. But at the moment, we're very happy with our current retention. We have $15 million uh, per event, and, and we put on top of that a $31 million aggregate for our pooled companies. Um, and in this case, like with Ida, it hit not only Louisiana, but it, it continued on up through um, New York, where we have a $3 million retention in our uh, Interboro insurance company in New York. So that's where the 18 comes from in Ida. Um, but obviously, Ida was a, a very, a, you know, a significant event, um, and we felt like that retention was was good there. On the AOP CAT, um, we, we are starting with the same framework um, that we had last year. Uh, we, again, we think that served us pretty well in Erie, um, and this is just something that we have to underwrite against. We may also put in some type of uh, aggregate protections or quarterly aggregate protections, but that yet, is yet to be determined. So in general, our CAT retentions at the moment, we expect to be pretty consistent with where we are right now this year in 21. Thank you. Uh, Dan, let me ask one more question from a point of ignorance, if I may, please, uh, that your maximum cat loss uh, that you've talked about this year would be $31 million, and yet I think you've had $37 million uh, here. W would you would you talk about that, that gap, please? 
Yeah, and just to be you know careful with our words. So we have a pooled group that's three of the uh, companies, American Coastal, Family Security, and UPC, um, and that has a, a $31 million aggregate, but it applies to name storms, um, uh, and, and there's a $3.5 million. So a, a very small storm may not get into that pool, um, some of them that you know you never even really hear about. But then also, uh, like I mentioned, we had $3 million in uh, Interborough that was not part of that pool, and then we also had a retention in Journey Insurance Company, which is not part of that pool. Um, so those, those uh, miscellaneous ones, and in, in some ways – the smaller hurricanes uh, can add up just as fast or faster than the, the large hurricanes, which run into our protection. That's very helpful. And so as you think about that, does, does that alter your thinking about next year's, uh, next year's uh, retention, or are, are, you, are you comfortable accepting that? It sounds like roughly $3 million, uh, per uh, for smaller event in some of these uh, non-pooled companies? Um, I would say it's a, it's a matter of negotiation each year. Um, um, but the, the structure that we came up with, we feel, protects us from the uh, severe loss. And when you get into the you know very small and modest losses, a million dollars or so, that, that can be almost like another fire or um, – Another thing, they get reported in a cumulative basis, um, but um, they impact our income statement more like a like a large fire does. Great, thank you for taking the uh, remedial question. Oh, no problem. <laughs> thank you. And, to, and a reminder to ask a question: press star one on your phone now. We'll pause for a few moments while we pull for questions. Thank you. Our next question comes from Greg Peters with Raymond James. Please state your question. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, just one other detail, but I just, you know, we're obviously on uh, seeing some movement in the expense ratio. Um, maybe can you uh, provide some guidance on how you think that might look next year, either on a gross or a net basis um, or both? Um, just to give us some parameters. Hi, Greg. This is Brad. Um, so on a net basis, you're probably going to see it very comparable to, to this quarter. Um, you know, it's, it's unlikely we'll, we'll move away from um, quota share in the short term. But, you know, depending on how much uh, we see that that's going to obviously have a, a significant impact on the, the net expense ratio. Um, so, you know, our preference is always to point to the, the direct or the gross expense ratio, which, you know, has been um, trending favorably. Um, and, and we might see a slight improvement um, uh, of up to a point next year. But again, that that's going to be dependent upon our our overall premium volume. Wouldn't wouldn't the agent the cutting of commissions, you know, have a favorable effect on that as we think about next year? Yes, that that is part of why we have an outlook for um, uh, a, a reduced expense ratio uh, on a direct basis. But but again, you know, as depending on our our capital needs and how much premium we're seeding, reinsurance costs can be very distortive to that. So on a net basis, you know, that, that may get washed out. But on a direct basis, absolutely. Got it. All right. Thanks for your answers. Thank you. And once again, to ask a question, press star 1. Thank you. There, there doesn't appear to be any additional questions at this time. I'll turn it back to management for closing remarks. Thank you. 
Okay, thanks. Um, and with, with that, we'll wrap up our call for today. Um, I want to thank our entire team for their tireless efforts, and thanks to all of you for joining our call today. So thanks again. Thank you. That concludes today's call. All parties may disconnect. Have a great evening.